Hello, I'm Tim Morris from Cincinnati State, and let's talk about how aircraft accumulators work in real life. It's time to go flying. The aircraft sits on the ramp, and when we finally get around to starting up the engines, during engine startup, we're going to fire up the engine, and pretty soon we're going to have hydraulic pressure coming up online from the hydraulic pumps. So what's going to happen is when the airplane, before startup, the airplane's sitting on the ramp and we have a nitrogen charge in our hydraulic accumulator. And the hydraulic pumps are turned off. The airplane's been sitting all night. There's no pressure. There's no hydraulic pressure on the airplane. So inside this accumulator, on this side of the bladder, we can see the bladder goes all the way up to the top here. This is all nitrogen. And this nitrogen charge, we're going to say that this nitrogen charge is, is something like um, 1,200 PSI. Let's use 1,200. So we have 1,200 PSI of nitrogen, and we filled it up. It, it was filled a few days ago uh, from this bottom valve. We hooked up a hose, and we charged it, and, and we have nitrogen, which is like air. It's, but it's, uh, nitrogen is, is, inert, is inert, so that's why we use nitrogen. So the airplane's sitting on the ground, hydraulics are turned off, the engines are shut down, and all we have in here is this bladder's expanded because it's, it's nitrogen and it's, it's like a basketball. And there's nothing, there's no hydraulic pressure on the airplane. So now we go to start up the airplane. And we have a hydraulic pump. The engines are now running. We have a hydraulic pump here. And we have uh, three selector valves. So we've got landing gear, this first, this first actuator up here. This is a landing gear actuator, and it is uh, uh, for the landing gear system where maybe we have several landing gear actuators. Okay, and then we have, over here, we have another control valve, and up here we have an actuator for the flaps. And then over here we have another control valve, and we have an actuator for the ailerons. So when we start the airplane up, um, these things are selected to the center position because the landing gear is, is down and locked, and we have it in the directional control valve, we, we have it in the middle. We don't want the gear to go up, we don't want it to go down. It's just in the middle. It's, it's just uh, locked in the middle. Same thing with flaps. Our flaps are up, we're not moving them up, not moving them down, we're locked in the middle. So none of these cylinders are moving. We just started the engines, the airplane's sitting, uh, idling, and the passengers are in the airplane, pilots are in the airplane, but we're just sitting there. So this pump, is capable of putting out 3,000 psi, and it does. And what happens is that we're not using any fluid, so this nitrogen charge, which we charged at 1,200 psi, well, the pump is putting out 3,000. And so, if I have 3,000, I have a rubber bladder between the hydraulic and up here is the nitrogen. This guy is 1,200. This guy's 3,000. If we have a push of war, you know, a tug of war, we where you're pulling the rope. Well, this is a push of war. I have a rub rubber bladder, and I have, on this side, I have 1,200 PSI of nitrogen, and this side, I have 3,000 PSI. Well, which one's going to win? Well, last time I checked, 3,000 beats 1,200. So the hydraulic fluid starts pushing against, against the nitrogen, and now the nitrogen is compressing, and as it compresses, the pressure goes up. So this keeps compressing until... This thing is compressed so tight that now the nitrogen is at 3,000 psi and the hydraulic fluid on this side is at 3,000 psi. So what that does is that forces the bladder to the middle, right? Because if you remember, the, my bladder was all the way. This was before the engine started. But as the hydraulic pressure started coming up, it forced this to the middle. And now it's 3,000 psi of nitrogen on this side and 3,000 psi of hydraulic fluid on this side. And now the engines are running, the airplane's sitting on the ground, this thing is just going to sit there, and it's equalized. 3,000 on this side and 3,000 on this side. And all it's going to do is let this fluid stay in here under pressure with this compressed. So now we pull out the runway. The pilots give power to the airplane. We go rolling down the runway. We take off and we're getting ready to climb out. And on climb out, the pilots put the landing gear up, and that takes a lot of hydraulic fluid 
to run a landing gear. They are big sonars. And then they start and they put the flaps part way up. And then the air traffic control says, hey, turn left. Uh, turn left uh, to your uh, course, your, your flight, the, the direction of flight. So we have the gear in transit and we have the flaps coming up. And that requires a lot of fluid. And what happens when we need a lot of fluid? And maybe we even need more fluid than what the pump can put out. We start to drop the hydraulic pressure because the hydraulic pump can't keep up. And we start losing pressure. So what happens is that you can see here my first valve, my landing gear is coming up. So the valve shifted and we've got hydraulic fluid going here, going through this valve and moving this landing gear cylinder. And the same thing over here. We got fluid, hydraulic fluid going through this valve, moving this cylinder, oops, moving this cylinder. Fluid is coming out the other end and going back to the reservoir. That's that little shortcut. That's a, that means that line is going back to the reservoir. That's the reservoir in the bottom of the pump, right? We take hydraulic fluid out of the reservoir through the pump and we go through the directional control valve. We move the cylinders and the hydraulic fluid that comes out of the cylinders on the return line goes back to the reservoir. Same thing over here. As they make the left turn, uh, we shift the control valve and it's moving hydraulic cylinders. This results in a big pressure drop. And now instead of the pressure, the hydraulic pressure being 3000, it starts to drop and it drops to 2800, 2700. And what happens is that now on this other side of my, as the hydraulic pressure drops on this side, I have 3000 psi of I have 3,000 psi of, of um, nitrogen, and it's pushing against 2,800 psi of hydraulics. So who's going to win? Well, 3,000 beats 2,800. So the nitrogen starts pushing again, and now it's pushing back on the hydraulic fluid. So this guy is at 3,000. This guy's at 2,800. Uh, 3,000 beats 2,800. The nitrogen wins and it starts forcing fluid back into the system under pressure. And what that does is that gives me additional fluid and additional pressure to run these items. And that is what an accumulator is used for. The other thing an accumulator can do is if we have surges in the system or we have vibration, this is a big shock absorber. And this, as we have shock coming through here, this rubber bladder is just like a big shock absorber, all right? The other thing that the hydraulic can, fluid can do is it can be used for an emergency situation. So if we lost the hydraulic pump or something, our last little bit, this is going to push, this can be used to push hydraulic fluid back into the system. Okay, now we're in flight and we're getting ready to land. Gear down flaps down, the gear is in transit, you can see the pilots put the landing gear down. In this situation, we've just got the shift going the other direction, we've got the same thing, we have a high usage um, situation. In flight, uh, when everything quit moving, we were able to charge the system back up. This was able to go back to 3000 PSI, fill this accumulator and compress the nitrogen, but this will work the same way when we get ready to land. So our high usage situations with the airplane are usually take off with the landing gear coming up when we have a lot of flaps moving and a lot of ailerons moving. Um, the accumulator, it stores, it stores hydraulic power for a rainy day. And that's how it works. So here we have, we're getting ready to land. And as the pressure drops, if the pressure drops the hydraulic uh, system, if the pump can't keep up, with all the things that we're doing. The nitrogen, uh, the, the pressure is going to drop on the hydraulic side. The nitrogen is going to then push the hydraulic fluid out until it equalizes pressure. When the system, when things quit moving and the pump starts to catch up, now the pump starts coming up 2700, 2800, 2900, and it starts pushing against the nitrogen and compresses it. And when everybody gets to the same pressure, so say 3000 here, and 3,000 here, this thing is full of hydraulic fluid, and we are equalized and ready for uh, future uses of hydraulic fluid from the accumulators. Thanks for watching.